from Atlanta, Georgia, and Seattle, Washington. Please welcome the great Layla Ali and Dre's. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. How are you doing? I'm doing great, even better. And I'm talking to two of you about Juneteenth, a, a, a holiday that I celebrated my whole life being from Texas. And now to see it recognized nationally is so special. And Dre, you, you helped jump this huge conversation off last year. Your video for the song Building Black Wealth had over two million views and jump started an entire new conversation. I'm curious, though, what inspired you to write the song? Um, you know what? I was looking at my own journey. I was looking at my life. Um, the reality that African-Americans spend $1.2 trillion in this country, but there's a new study that says where wealth is set to bottom out by, what, 2053? And I'm going, man, what's wrong with that? There was something that said we weren't spending money in our own communities. Mm -hmm. And so we're making the products. We make amazing things across the board. And so I really just wanted to write a song that told my story, my journey. Um, and so I just started buying black owned products, made a commitment to turn my home 25% black owned. And then after that, I wanted to write a song about it. You know, we've seen these initiatives to support black businesses in reality. This is not to segregate black business owners from white people coming to buy it, too. Shout out to Mikey's Likey in my neighborhood, an ice cream place that I say, listen, Mikey just doesn't want black people buying his ice cream. He wants all people to buy his ice cream because that is how we succeed and that's how we keep from being marginalized. But this is a, an opportunity to shine light, Layla, on black business owners who don't get it. Absolutely. And like you said, our businesses, including mine, are for everyone. And I hope that we get to a place where we don't have to highlight and say, hey, support black businesses. You just want to support amazing businesses that are bringing you products that you like and you love that you can share with your family. But right now, being that we're having so many issues in our own community and the economy with building wealth, it's really important that we are intentional about uplifting, you know, uh, businesses in our own communities. That's that's why it has to be done. But absolutely, it's for everyone. You know, and I think about the environment you grew up in, Layla. You know, what people would certainly associate it with wealth and glamour, and all of those things that come from hard work. Nothing was given to your father. Nothing was given to you. You bought your own car as a young woman. This is a larger conversation about legacy money as well, passing it down and understanding what black wealth means. Absolutely. My amazing father, who we all know, um, stood up for so much and was always trying to lift his own community first. He always said if he can't go walk in his own neighborhood, if he can't, you know, sleep at night on his pillow to know that he's not giving back, then he didn't feel like he was a whole man. And that's something that was embedded in me the same way. Like you said, um, you know, I, I had to people would look at me and say, oh, you were given everything because they have no idea of what, what you've been through. So, um, again, I just try to uplift us all as a community not only as an African-American, just as a, as a small business owner. Right. You know, we want to bring exposure to other, other businesses as well. And Drace, it's interesting, your video, Building Black Wealth, which set a lot of this, this new conversation off, um, you spent time in Zimbabwe. I was thinking about when Muhammad Ali went to fight in the rumble in the jungle and how he came back so impressed, uh, and Layla, you know this better than anyone, by Black Wealth and how he famously talked about people have this perception of Africa and in reality, the perception often even now, sadly, does not include what wealth looks like in one of the richest continents in the world, right? So when you look at your upbringing in the video and the message, what resonates most with you in this conversation? What we found is what we're having is an issue of exposure. If people can get exposure to these businesses and see the excellence of them, they're willing to support the businesses because they're small businesses. They're American businesses. So this is not, yeah, it's a black movement, but it's an American movement. Right. When you talk about Juneteenth, there can be no freedom without economic empowerment in this country. And, and Layla, the urgency of the conversation, you know, when we talk about Black Wall Street and Tulsa, the massacre, or George Floyd, but to be quite honest with you, you look at the number of businesses impacted by the pandemic, Black businesses disproportionately hit hard, women-owned businesses disproportionately hit hard by these struggling times. 
you know, rooting for a, a female-led business, rooting for a Black-owned business is rooting for America, as Dre's pointed out. Absolutely. That's very clear to all three of us. We're just trying to make that clear <laughs> to other people. We're right? trying to get a knockout message to other people. <laughs> right. We just all need to do our part and just start being intentional and start knowing that you are voting with your dollars. You know what I'm saying? Just in general. So you always want to be conscious of that just in general when you're when you're spending money and supporting brands. Well, I'm so happy to be with both of you and hear you speak up. And to your point, we might get it, but our responsibility is to make sure everyone gets it. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks thank for having you. us on.